everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we're going to be creating a podium. I thought it could be cool if we put one in here to kind of, you know, have something that people could actually read off of if they're giving some sort of speech or something. So let's go ahead and hop to a clean layer. So what I'm going to do is first things first, we'll go ahead and set this. I'm going to be working in inches. So of course work with whatever you're most comfortable with while we working in inches. And I changed the scale of my grid floor to quarter of an inch. So to get started for our podium, I want to go ahead and do shift a add mesh and do a cube. Now it's going to add a six inch cube as a little large. So we're going to go ahead and size that way down, probably less than half an inch to start because this is just going to be the building block of what we're going to extrude out of. So we'll just start with something less than half an inch build up and then we can resize it once we get it back into our dungeon and get our final size there. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide this menu by hitting the N key because we don't need it until much later, like I said. So I'm going to hit the period on the number pad so I can focus in on our cube and tab into edit mode. For podium, I do want it to be a little bit taller just go ahead and hit s and then size along the z axis so i'll hit z and size it up to be a little bit more rectangular like that i'm going to build out the base a little bit first so i'm going to go ahead go into wireframe by hitting z b for border select and do e to extrude just pull it down a little bit and size that out start giving it a flare do e to extrude again pull it down a lot more size it out again e to extrude size that in e to extrude one more time to give us a base right there and you'll want to make sure that that is filled in if for some reason there's a hole here you can hit f to face that off now to make this a little bit fancier i'm going to go ahead and do Control r and scroll up until we have five more loops added so i'm going to go ahead and Control r um, I'm sorry, alt right click this loop, this loop, and this loop, and just go ahead and hit S, Shift, Z, so it sizes in every direction but the Z axis, until I get something more like that. That's looking pretty good. And later we'll add a subdivision surface modifier where that will round out so it's not as pointy. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more to the top before we add more stuff. So go ahead, select your top. We're going to do E to extrude. Just go ahead and pull that up. I'm going to pull it up and then do control R, pull that to meet the loop we just did and then size that out about there. And the reason I did that was so that way this loop right here, is the same exact size as the podium so we don't have to guesstimate or do anything like that it's already done okay so i'm gonna hit you to extrude again go ahead and pull that up maybe about there so there's a quarter left in that grid space go ahead and do e to extrude we're gonna size that out so it's overhanging our biggest point so far I'm just going to do E to extrude again and pull that up to about there. Control R. I'm going to scroll up and give myself two loops. I'm going to go ahead and do Control R again. Pull that down to the second loop and size that out. Should be more like that. Okay. Now, lastly, I want to go ahead, do B border select, and get grab this top loop here. Do E to extrude, size that in, E to extrude again, and pull that up. So that's where our book will be resting. We'll change the tilt and everything later, but for right now, it's a good placeholder. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and start adding in details. So first thing I want to do is Control R, add a loop straight down the middle. So just left click, right click, so it stays right in the center. Control R on the um, other side as well. Left click, right click, so it stays in the center again. I'm gonna go into top view, just A to deselect everything, Z for wireframe view, border select all of these vertices so you get that L shape. Go to add modifier, oops, sorry, first you wanna do X, delete those vertices, add modifier, mirror, make sure you have it on the X and the Y axis, 
and you'll want to apply clipping. So now I want to go ahead and kind of imitate the arches that we have on the pews that we created and the actual arches. So I also want to go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier while we're at it. And I want to go ahead and just turn that up to three. That's my personal preference. You guys can, of course, um, do whatever you would prefer for the subdivision surface, but I'm going to go ahead, start sharpening some edges. So I'm just alt right clicking some loops and doing shift E. I want to do every other one of these loops like that. Grab that. Of course, you can always hop into wireframe view so it's a little bit easier to see. And I do want this one sharpened and that sharp and one more. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Something like that to get started. Okay. So like I was saying, I want to add in some arches to the main like stand here imitating kind of what we have on the pews and our arches. So easiest way to do that will be go ahead and go down here, switch to face select. We're going to grab this face to start off and do E to extrude and just hit escape. And you'll definitely want to make sure clipping is on. So that way it sticks to the center here and doesn't add anything extra. Because if you do it without clipping and you hit E to extrude, it's going to bring it in like this. So you don't want that. You need to extrude, size that in, and we're going to do maybe about there. You'll notice that it sizes a lot more along the Z than the X, and I want to go ahead and thicken that up so we can just pull along the X axis until we get a nice thickness there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do the same thing on this side first before we go any further. So I'm just going to hit E to extrude, size that down. I'm going to switch to vertex select so that way I can see how far we brought that in. So size that down until they are about the same height. And then I'll just size that in along the Y until it looks about the same on each side. So that's pretty close. Um, unfortunately, it's not exact, but close enough. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and select these two vertices. I'm just going to go into front view and we're going to pull that down to wherever we want our arch to start curving. So I'm thinking right about here is good. And we only pulled it along the Z. So these two are still the exact same height, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead, do control R, just do left click, right click, control R, left click, right click on both of these arches. So that way, again, we can grab these two vertices and pull them up along the Z axis, but it's not quite as smooth as I would like. So I'm just going to manually just hit G and curve that a little bit nicer and fix it on the other side as well. I'm just kind of eyeballing that to be approximately the same. Kind of like that. Luckily, these things are going to print out to be pretty small. So even if there is some error in our matching up and trying to mirror on each side, it, it'll be okay, <laughs> which is nice. So it's going to be a little bit forgiving for us. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead, switch to face select mode, go ahead and select these two. I'm just going to go into top view and hit E to extrude and pull that back to maybe about there. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. Go to top view, E to extrude, and pull that back about the same depth. So I want to make sure 
when I'm pulling these guys back, I'm just going to hide this so you guys can see better. I want to make sure that they are not intersecting or getting very close because when we print this out, we want to make sure there's still plenty of space for our printer to be able to actually put material down. So they're not intersecting. It's not going to make a hole or anything. This should be plenty of space for us. Okay. So now I do want to sharpen a few edges. So I'm going to grab this corner edge and you'll notice that it makes this funky little webbing here so we just need to grab this edge as well and sharpen that to get rid of this weird funky spot that blender just doesn't know what to do with i personally want this part sharpened as well you can leave it smooth if you want but i think it will match our other arches better if we go ahead and do that and then i definitely want our top ones whoops <laughs> top ones sharpened as well. But again, you can leave that smooth if you would prefer. So I wanna go ahead and do Control R and add a loop right here. But you'll notice that it's kind of imitating our other loops. So I wanna go ahead and do S, Z, zero to flatten that out. And I'm just gonna pull that up to about here, giving us plenty of space, maybe right about there. So now what we wanna do after we add this loop I'm going to grab this edge here. We're going to do W and subdivide, and that will give us an extra vertice right in the middle. I'm going to drag that down, try to line it up as best I can at the moment. Go ahead and select this vertice as well and hit J to join that. Grab these two, hit J to join that. Now we can go ahead and just select this one and pull that down so that way it is perfectly straight. Do control R and that will add in a loop right in the center. So all we have to do, go ahead, grab this part of the loop here. I'm just gonna go about an angle like that and size that out pretty dramatically. And I do wanna go ahead, we'll have to sharpen uh, I don't need to sharpen all of this, just like that. Now the only thing is you'll want to pay attention to is these two might dimple in, so you'll want to go in and pull those back out so it still remains nice and flat. Perfect. And of course you could make that larger if you want. I think I might actually. I want it to be pretty dramatic for the print. So yeah, that's looking a little better. Let me go ahead and edit this part again, right there. And, ooh, there. Okay. So our arches are looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now, one more thing I wanna add before we uh, apply our mirror modifier and start editing the podium more. Sorry, I keep wanting to say pedestal for some reason. I want to go ahead and add some features right here. So if we go ahead and do face select, I'm going to grab these three faces and do E to extrude. I'm just going to go into front view and do S and X and size that along a little bit. And to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm just going to hide our subdivision surface and scooch this over a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to switch to vertex select mode here and just kind of push some of these vertices over so they don't get in our way. Now for what we just extruded, I'm going to grab this edge on the left, do SX0 to straighten that out. And then I'm just going to pull it over and same for this one, grab the other edge, do SX0 zero and push that over just like that so the other thing we will need to make sure is that we push those back just slightly so it comes off that edge just a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen this edge and I'm going to make sure I get these sharpened as well. As well as this edge. But 
I'm going to go ahead and unsharpen this and unsharpen this edge. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and reselect these three faces that we extruded. Do E to extrude and just size that along the Z axis. Looking good, maybe a little bit further. But I'm going to grab this face and pull that out to be right about there. Looks good. But then I want this edge to be out even further. So I'm going to pull that like that and even pull it down along the Z. Okay, looking good. I do want these to be sharp as well as these. And I also want to go ahead and probably unsharpen these slightly so it just gets more of a bevel. So let's do Shift E and then push that in until we get it to be more like that. Awesome. So of course you can do that, leave it like it is, or you could have done that on the corner, but I want to go ahead and add another one right here. So it kind of matches that way. I don't know. I feel like it'll just be a little bit more balanced that way. But one thing you'll probably notice real quick is that our piece right here is kind of hovering over this ledge. So to fix that before we continue, I'm just going to do control R move this up just like that and then i'm going to pull it down and maybe even size it out a little bit to give it more of a curve so that way this is sitting on that nice and pretty so we might sharpen this edge up a little bit afterward but i'm going to go ahead and fix up this piece first and we'll go from there okay so i'm going to go ahead pretty much do the same thing we did before so e to extrude size in along the y Push that back, hide our subdivision surface modifier, SY0, pull this guy over, SY0, pull this over, make sure it's about the same depth, which that looks... pretty close, push it back a little bit further that should be pretty good so all we have to do is move this edge and this edge back along the X just slightly to match that as well and I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these guys up oh but you'll notice that this got crossed so I want to make sure we pull that back over And go ahead and unsharpen these two edges. Okay, now I'll go ahead, grab those three faces again, go into front view so I can kind of use this, do E to extrude, size along the Z, and pull those towards each other until they basically match where that is. Grab this face, I'm gonna go look at the side view real quick. We pulled it out pretty far, so just about there. And then we pulled this edge down further and pulled it out further to be more like that. Okay, and then we will unsharpen these slightly. Let's go ahead and put our modifier back. And sharpen these. Cool. So that looks actually pretty good. So what I want to do is make a duplicate so that way if we want to go back make adjustments it's a lot easier. Um, what I should have done was rename this so if we do podium can't tap around this microphone. Okay. 
So I'm going to hide the first one and have our second one selected and we're just going to apply the mirror modifier. Don't apply the subdivision surface, leave that for later. So we're going to tab into edit mode. That way we can start editing this top. Now, for podiums, typically they stick out further in the front and less in the back so that way it's more approachable and it's kind of flatter in the back, it's a little bit easier to read off of. So I'm going to switch to vertex select mode, just have A to deselect anything that is selected already, Z for wireframe view, and I'm going to go ahead and select these vertices up front. I want to make sure I don't have anything else selected, so just essentially this line. And I want to essentially have the same ones in the back selected. Now all I have to do is push this forward. And honestly, I don't really need, so I'm going to do shift and get rid of these vertices now and push more to be more like that. So I still want a little bit of overhang for the back, but more of it in the front. So it's kind of shifted. Okay. For the top, I'm going to go ahead and select all these vertices and we're going to rotate that pretty drastically. So it's a little bit more like a book we'd be sitting on there and the person wouldn't have to be looking straight down on the table. Go ahead, pull this back so that way it's nice and straight, just like that. Make sure it's a good size. I kind of want this to be a little bit wider. So I'm going to do S and X just like that. And I might even pull it back some more too. You'll notice that throws our angle off. So if you do pull it back more, you'll want to make sure you grab that edge. Oops and pull that up so we get that nice angle again. Perfect. Oh, actually, a little more. Not that far. Okay. Perfect. So our podium is almost complete. All we have to do now is go ahead and move it to our first layer by hitting M and then selecting the button. And right now, obviously, it's going through the floor. So first thing, we'll want to go ahead and just pop that above the floor. I'm going to go into top view, move it to about there. And actually, <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty good size. So let's see how tall it is. Ooh, it is an inch tall, which is probably a little bit too large. Um, unless, you know, it's a pretty tall creature because I don't know about you guys, but I use the Reaper Bones minis and for the average human model, it seems to be about one inch is where his chest is for the one that I'm currently looking at. And so I kind of think I want this to be just a tad shorter. So all I'm going to do is just size this manually down just a little bit. So I'm going to sco scooch in and size this down until I'm just under an inch. So maybe right about there would work perfectly. I'm just going to move that to be back down on the floor. Now, the other thing is if you wanted, you could leave it a little bit larger, which I'm almost thinking it might be cool to have it a little bit oversized. Um, so I might undo those sizes and leave it kind of like that uh, for taller creatures and whatnot. And another thing you might want to do is if you wanted to use this skull again and put it on the inside of the arch, that could be kind of neat looking too. Just another suggestion. So especially, you know, kind of sticking with the theme here, but I'm going to push this. Actually, no, that should work right there at an angle. But we are all set. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. And of course, if you have any requests as well, put them in the comments below. But I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Other than that, I hope you guys like and subscribe so I can continue with this series. And I will see you guys next week.